If you've ever looked into getting some alternative handlebars, I can pretty much guarantee you've come across the Jones Loop H-bars. They're a staple in the bikepacking world, have been around for about a decade, and have a really distinctive look. While I don't have any hard evidence, I'm also pretty sure they've influenced many of the alt bars out there, including the Surly Maloko. I've recently had the chance to test out two flavors of the Loop H-bar, and it's been somewhat of a surprising experience for me. In this video, I'm going to talk about what I think about these bars and what I've found to be the key to taking full advantage of their design. This isn't my first time using the Jones bars. Four years ago, I picked up a Salsa Mukluk with a set of them, and while I used them for a bit on several bikes, I was pretty indifferent toward them overall. I mentioned this to Jeff when I spoke with him on the phone, which, by the way, anyone can do if they're interested in a Jones product, but his response was to stress the importance of setting them up correctly. We spoke for probably 30 or 40 minutes total, and about half of that was talking about my bike geometry and how I should adjust things for setup. Partway through the explanation, I realized there was a really good chance my past feelings with the bars were probably due to how I'd set them up. I could go into stem length and angle and all that, but I think it's better to follow the explanation from Jones themselves, so look in the description for a link to that. These bars are all about comfort, and that's achieved through giving you both a natural hand and body position as well as multiple hand positions. Using these bars with a proper setup has given me a lot more understanding of why Jones bikes are designed the way they are, with a super short effective top tube, high stack, and short reach. Somehow, even the Salsa Cutthroat, which is designed for crunching miles on long days in the saddle, is a little more racy than a Jones bike. When we talked about sizing and fit, Jeff mentioned that on his bikes, you can usually sit very comfortably with almost no weight on your hands when in the furthest back position. I've tried to take that to heart when setting my bikes up, and after swapping back and forth between the two bars, I found that even on the cutthroat, I prefer the two and a half inch rise over the half inch to try and mimic that feeling. Now I know what you're thinking, you know, a two and a half inch rise, that is just absolutely crazy. You're basically just a sail in the wind. Well, despite possibly losing all aerodynamics from this more upright position, I found myself to be typically faster overall on the routes I usually ride. I was thinking about this the other day as I was heading down a dusty road along the river and realized there was a simple explanation for this physics-defying phenomenon. Outside of people who are really into going fast and racing, comfort seems to have more of an effect on speed than aerodynamics. When you're comfortable or in a position that puts strain on muscles in your back or shoulders, you tend to tense up, have to frequently adjust your body, and ultimately tire out or cramp more quickly. On the flip side, I found when I'm in a more comfortable position, I feel like I could ride all day and I can mentally focus more on where I'm going, attacking the ups and downs, and generally just enjoy the experience more altogether. Now I'm not saying that you're actually defying physics. Aerodynamics obviously matter. But as with everything, it's all about not going to the extreme either way. If you were so upright you were essentially on an elliptical, you're probably not going to go all that fast. And if you're so tucked into an aero position, good luck staying that way for very long or being able to really put the power down when you need to. It all comes down to preference, but I think that for the typical rider who isn't wanting to dominate the local races and can't ride or train for hours each day, a comfortable position is basically life changing. I've now used these bars in a lot of different situations from long and flat gravel roads to twisty single track. These bars are really good in gravel situations and on easier trails that aren't super tight and twisty. One of the main strengths of the loop bars is the number of hand positions offered. The rear position is incredibly comfortable, almost feeling like a beach cruiser or something at times, but it's also the position I found to be the best in situations that require a lot of steering control, like in technical terrain or on high speed trails. The front part of the loop puts you in the most aerodynamic position, which is really nice for when you've got a headwind or a long stretch of road ahead. It can feel a little twitchy, but it's not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I'd say it's a comparable feeling to being on your typical width road handlebars. 
The rear section of the bars are really long and I found that choked up close to the brakes and shifters is a good all around position where you're not super upright, but you still have good access to the controls unlike if you were on the front of the loop. When standing up and pedaling with your hands here, your hands are basically exactly where they'd fall if you were just standing. That might sound weird, but when I decide to stand out of the saddle and push through a short climb, it feels really natural and really comfortable. Another thing to note is that I have been using the Jones Loop bag and I love it. It's in a really good position. It zips open and closed really easily. It's a good size. I've been loving that on my rides. For those things that I normally keep in my pockets or even on a backpack, I don't even ride with a backpack anymore when I have this. So I've praised these bars quite a bit so far, but I do think there's a limit to the magic of the Jones Loops. Maybe I just haven't ridden them long enough to fully adjust, but I'm still not quite comfortable with them on anything over, say, a blue rated mountain bike trail. I haven't crashed or anything, but I'm definitely slower than with a typical mountain bike flat bar. It could be the narrow by modern standards 710 millimeter width, but something about the hand position at that point just doesn't feel as secure. It's definitely more capable in those situations than if you had drop bars, but I'd still prefer normal mountain bike bars for any trail that's a black diamond or more. I've also found it a little bit awkward to make really sharp turns, think U-turns. The bar is so far back behind the stem that when you turn, it kind of comes almost like into your leg and I'm, I haven't quite figured out how to make those turns less awkward. That said, it's not really the point of these bars. They're not meant for the extreme on either end, whether that's Grand Tour road racing or Red Bull Rampage downhill. If you put all the bike disciplines on a scale from road bikes to downhill bikes, the Jones bike is meant to cover 80-85% of that scale, and given that these bars are an integral part of the design, that's true for them as well. They're perfect for bikepacking, gravel riding, commuting in town, and even a whole lot of mountain bike trails out there. Overall, I really like these bars, especially when compared to the last time that I used them. They're extremely comfortable, they give me all of the hand positions I could dream of, and I want to say thank you to Jones Bikes for sending these bars out, as well as I've got some other products from them, including the Duro Crux tires in a 27.5 and a 29, both of those by 3.25. I think if you are on the fence of what size to use, if you want the half inch rise or the two and a half inch rise, really I would probably talk to Jones Bikes about that. But generally, if your stack is really low, you're gonna want to get the two and a half inch rise. Otherwise, the half inch might work out for you, but it's a preference thing, so it's totally up to you. Between these two bars and the bikes I have, I've decided the two and a half is probably what I like more, but yeah, it's, it's a preference thing. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, be sure to do so so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. Go check me out on Instagram. I post there probably way more frequently than here. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.